we are going to integrate the square root of 1 minus 1 over x dx. Now when you first see this integral, your instinct might be to let u equal the entire square root and then square it, solve for x, figure out what dx is and turn it into a rational expression, then try to integrate from there. But that's actually very difficult. That's the first way that I try to do this integral and it takes a very, very long time to get from here down to something that you can actually integrate and your answer ends up being really long and ugly. So maybe there's some other way that we can deal with this integral. Now when I look at this integral, I see the square root of 1 minus something. And that makes me think of the square root of 1 minus sine squared x, which is the same as cosine of x. So if we could turn this 1 over x into the sine squared of something, that would simplify the square root down to just a cosine function, which would be a lot easier to deal with. Normally we would want a square root of 1 minus x squared to do that kind of substitution, but we can still do it anyway if we say 1 over x equals sine squared theta, where theta is our new variable. We can substitute that in easily and that will give us the cosine function, but let's see what we can do to get our dx. We know x is going to be 1 over sine squared theta, which means that when we differentiate we get dx equals, doing the derivative of 1 over something we get negative 1 over, and then sine squared squared is sine to the fourth, and then the derivative of the bottom function will be 2 sine theta cosine theta d theta. Now from here we see we have a sine to the fourth on the bottom and a sine to the first on top, which means we can simplify this down. We have negative 2 cosine theta on the top and then we have sine cubed theta on the bottom. So now we can plug all this information into our integral. We get that this is equal to the integral of the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta and then our dx becomes negative 2 cosine theta over sine cubed theta d theta. And now we can simplify this again. We know that this square root of 1 minus sine squared of theta, that's just cosine of theta. So this is equal to the integral of negative 2 cosine squared theta, multiplying these two cosines together, and then we divide by sine cubed theta d theta. Now from here, this expression looks a little easier to integrate, but it's still pretty difficult. At first you might want to substitute sine cubed to theta, but because we have a cosine squared on the top, that's going to be kind of difficult because we can't just pull out a cosine. But what we can do is we can separate this cosine squared into cosine to the first and then cosine to the first by multiplying the second cosine theta out here like this. And now this looks like a situation where we can use integration by parts. This part right here we know how to integrate easily, and this part we can differentiate. So let's set up our integration by parts over here. We're going to differentiate cosine theta, and we're going to integrate this part, negative 2 cosine theta over sine cubed theta. Now if we differentiate cosine theta, we know we'll get negative sine theta. And let's see what happens if we do this integral right here. We have the integral of negative 2 cosine theta over sine cubed theta d theta. And like I said before, we can easily substitute u equals sine theta, which gives du is cosine theta d theta. So this integral becomes the integral of negative 2 cosine theta d theta becomes du, and then we have over, this is our u cubed. So this is the integral of negative 2, 1 over u cubed is the same as u to the negative 3 du. And then from here we can apply the power rule. So we get u to the negative 2 divided by negative 2. So the negative 2 on the top and the negative 2 we're dividing by will cancel. And all we're left with is u to the negative 2, which is just 1 over, and then u is sine theta, so we get sine squared theta, just like that. So this is our integral. We can go over here, write 1 over sine squared theta as the result. And now we can get on with the integration by parts. So let's see what our result will look like. This integral is going to be equal to, we take these first, we have cosine theta over sine squared theta, and then we do minus a minus will be a plus, and then we have 
the integral of sine theta over sine squared theta d theta. And now we can figure out what this is. We know we have a sine squared on the bottom and a sine on the top, so we can cancel those and we get the integral of 1 over sine theta is the same as cosecant theta d theta. And this integral I'm not going to go over in this video. This is a standard result. So if you've seen the integral of secant x, the way that that integral works, this is basically the same except you replace cosecant for secant and cotangent for tangent. I'll tell you the answer that you get for this is going to be we have cosine theta over sine squared theta. And then the integral of cosecant theta d theta, this integral right here, is going to be minus ln absolute value of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. So that is the answer for our integral. We're done with the integration. Now it's time to go back to the x world. So I've written down a result right here. We have cosine theta over sine squared theta minus the natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. Now we want to take this back to the x world, right, in terms of x. And in order to do that, it'll be helpful to construct a triangle using sine of theta so that we can figure out what cosine and cotangent are equal to. In order to do that, we can take this equation right here, which has a sine squared theta, and just take the square root of both sides. That will give us that sine theta is equal to, then we have the square root of 1, which is just 1, over the square root of x. So we can use this to construct our right triangle. Here we have theta as our angle, and then sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side will be 1, the hypotenuse will be square root of x. When we want to find this side right here, we can call it s. By the Pythagorean theorem, we know that s squared plus 1 squared is 1 equals, and then the square root of x squared is just x. And now if we solve for s, we get that s is equal to the square root of x minus 1. So this adjacent side, we can write the square root of x minus 1. Now we have everything that we need to write this integral in terms of x. So first, let's look at this cosine theta. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, that's going to be the adjacent is x minus 1, and then over x, all inside the square root. Then we have a 1 over sine squared theta. We know from before that this is actually just equal to x, so we can just write an x multiplied up front, just like that. Now we do minus natural log cosecant theta. Cosecant is 1 over sine, so that's going to be hypotenuse over opposite, which is square root x. And then we add cotangent theta is going to be adjacent over opposite. So that's going to be square root of x minus 1. And now we can simplify this a little bit more. First of all, we can write this square root. We see a common x in the denominator. We can distribute that to the top. So x over x first is 1. Then we have minus 1 over x. And now for the natural log, we see that both of these are square roots being added together. The square root function is always positive, which means we don't need the absolute value. We can just use parentheses. We get square root x plus square root x minus 1. Add c, just like that, and we are done. So when you see an integral like this that has a square root, you know you could substitute the square root, but you also can tell that it's going to take a really long time to get this answer just using a rational expression. See if there's a way that you can leverage that square root to do some kind of trig substitution that lets you turn it into an integral that you can solve easier and then take back in terms of x. So that is our answer.